Cheers. This is actually not coffee, it is Theraflu. I am still unfortunately dealing with a little bit of a head cold. Against my better judgment, we are going to be participating in Vlogmas this year. Date of filming this video is December 1st, 2024. And now originally I wasn't going to participate in Vlogmas this year. This is going to be my third year doing it. Our first two times didn't really work out the first time I did it. I made it halfway through, but I had just gotten a brand new job and it just got way too hectic around the holidays, so I just had to give it up. And last year in 2023 was my second time or our second time doing the whole Vlogmas thing. And I made it about 15 or 16 days. I did a better job of than on the second year. I did a better job last year than I did the first time. However, I got sick midway through and I just lost momentum. Originally, I decided I'm not doing it. Daily videos are just too much. They are just not good at all. Too much pressure. Just no one needs to be uploading daily videos. However, a little while ago, I did get a comment from a user. I'll post the comment right here. And they were asking me if I was going to participate in Vlogmas this year since they were thinking about doing it. And this really had me rethinking the whole Vlogmas thing since it's super easy for us as people to always look at the negatives of experience but there were a lot of positives that came out of that as well. So today we're going to talk about some of the mistakes that I've made when doing Vlogmas previously. That way you can learn from my mistakes. We're also going to talk about some of the positives of the experience since I did gain some awesome skills that I still have with me to this day. First, mistakes. The number one mistake that I made was caring way too much about video views and the video's overall performance. At the end of the day, we cannot control what other people do, whether they love our videos, whether they hate our videos, whether we get a lot of hate comments, a lot of good comments, we can't control that. The only thing that we can control is our action. Now, I thought that all I had to do was upload daily videos every day for 30 days, and since no one else was doing it, I would stand out and I would have explosive growth overnight, 100,000 subscribers really fast. And this was not easy, but I finally have let go of this mindset mostly. I still struggle with it sometimes. Can't expect your videos to pop off immediately. This stuff is not easy. So a great example would be this video. I don't know if it's gonna trend well. I don't know if people are gonna click well. I know what title and thumbnail I'm gonna use. I know what I'm gonna talk about. I have some bullet points just on my phone right here. I know how to make a video that I'm proud of and if I showed it to my friends or family members, they would say, oh, well, this is actually a good video. I can control how good I think the video is, but I can't control will it go viral overnight or if the thumbnail is totally clickable. You gotta let that stuff go. Chasing overnight success is just gonna burn you out. It happened to me, learn from my mistakes, trust me. So what do I mean by focusing on things that you can control? Show up every day, don't take shortcuts, give it your absolute best, work your behind off. Don't just hop on trends for again, overnight success. Stay true to yourself. If you don't want to make a video about something or if you don't want to follow a trend because you don't truly believe in it, it's better to do your own thing since in the long run it's going to get you more success rather than just making that surprise face, the thumbnail where people are like, which is just something I can't stand and I will never do. Even if I could get a million subscribers tomorrow by putting one of those thumbnails up, well, maybe a million subscribers is a different story, but it is not something I ever want to do. It's like a cheap, easy shortcut that everyone's taking, not my style at all. So you've got to figure out what works for you and what you refuse to do. Stay true to yourself and what you believe in. And in the long run, you're going to have a much better audience and a much better success, better success rate in the long run. And overall, you're going to be more content. Mistake number two, talking about way too many topics. Now I've said before on this channel that I am not the biggest fan of niching down. And historically, I tend to niche for a month, then I talk about random things for a month. I flop back and forth. However, what I found recently is sticking to just men's fashion and cycling and doing a little bit of experimentation, but 80% of the videos are on those two topics, men fashion being my main topic. The whole creation process has gotten easier. I have a better time focusing, coming up with videos, talking to the camera, it feels or seems or feels, a, if I could actually talk to the camera, it feels a lot more natural since it's something I know what I'm talking about rather than just something that I have a year of experience with. And it seems like you guys in the audience really enjoy those videos. After all, if you want to be a successful content creator here on YouTube or anywhere, it's not about what you want to make. It's about what the audience wants to make. So talking about random topics, it could be a lot harder to find a core audience, but also it's going to lead to burnout. Remember I just said focusing got a lot easier just sticking to one or two topics. Well, when I was sticking to 10 topics, I was doing finance videos. I did a stock market video that went crazy last summer. And I did a couple of 
finance, finance, I think I said finance videos. I did a couple of camera reviews, which are hit or miss. A couple of vlogs here and there, again, which are hit and miss. Ever since I put the limits and just focus on one or two main topics here on this channel, everything has gotten easier and it actually does scratch that creative itch. Mistake number four, stressing hard about having to post every single day of December. Now remember at the start of this video, I talked about how I didn't make it through the entire December vlogmas my previous two times. Sometimes life happens and you've got to give yourself a break. So whether you have a really crazy season at work or you get sick and you can't film for a few days, it does not mean that you have to stop altogether. And these were probably the biggest mistakes that I made my previous two seasons of vlogmas. I just missed a day and lost all momentum. And while there are a lot of upsides to doing something daily, it just forms a great habit. One of the main downsides is the pressure it can put on you. Example is this video. Right now it is about just after 3 p.m. I have obviously not edited this video. I'm in the middle of filming it right now. I'm almost like, like maybe about halfway through. I'm going to give it my best and try to get it out by tonight. But I mentioned I still got a bit of a head cold, which is very annoying. So if I don't get it out till tomorrow, that's okay. Life happens and you can't beat yourself up if you miss one upload. Another big danger of uploading every single day is you may end up with a subpar video that maybe if you left it for another day, if you did one quick round of one more quick round of editing, the video would have been a lot better. But since there's so much pressure on you doing daily uploads, you may just end up with a subpar video up on your channel. Whereas realistically, you could have made it a much better video if you just did a little bit more work on it and had a little bit more time. And finally, mistake number five, stressing about titles and thumbnails way too hard. Now I have still not figured out titles and thumbnails. I've spent a lot of time on thumbnails and titles and talking like four or five hours on both of them, only to have a video flop and perform horribly. And then I have some other videos where I literally just threw up a title and just grabbed one of the YouTube generated thumbnails and those videos skyrocketed. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but one thing that I can say is stressing about titles and thumbnails doesn't seem to be super efficient if you wanna grow in the long term here on YouTube. And it's just something that's crazy to me that sometimes the less time that you spend on a title and the thumbnail, the video can actually go viral. That's my experience. By the way, going viral for me is any video that gets 5,000 views in over a month since I have just under 5,000 subscribers at the time of filming this video. By the way, thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't already, go ahead and consider it. It helps me out and I can help you out. So consider subscribing, it's totally free. Okay, walked in a complete circle filming this video around the apartment. Now that we did that, it's time to talk about some of the ways that Vlogmas has helped me and it could definitely help you or just daily uploads in general. Number one, self-discipline. There was no question that I was going to be filming and editing a video every single day. It wasn't, should I make a video today? It was, what am I going to make a video about? That means every morning I had to get up, have coffee, shower, and get fully dressed and look presentable since I was gonna be on camera every single day. Whereas beforehand, if I was only making a couple of videos per week, maybe some days I would sit around till 11, editing, doing some shorts, maybe I would watch some Netflix, play some Zelda, check out the Zelda Shield if anyone actually Look, saw that in the in the video. It forced me to show up every single day. There was no room for laziness and my Netflix consumption, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, everything, that was all much lower since I was spending a lot more time creating content rather than consuming it. And the second big thing that daily videos and Vlogmas has helped me with where I got lightning fast at my skills and just super efficient with everything. What used to take me six hours to edit now takes me three hours to edit. And I was just, camera confidence was through the roof. I knew my cameras really well. I knew my software. Everything just got so much faster, so much more efficient. I just felt like a machine. And the previous video I posted called Black Friday, it should pop up. I don't know where it pops up. It'll pop up somewhere up there. It's the video that I posted last week, right? before Thanksgiving 2024. That video from start to finish took me two hours. I actually wrote a script for the intro, memorized it, and I had a couple of bullet points. So that took me about 10 or 15 minutes to do. Then I was in the backyard of the house that I was staying at. I had one of my cameras. I moved the tripod around, got a bunch of static shots, put it in my computer, spent a couple of time editing. Boom, there we go. Put up a nice thumbnail, threw up a title, the whatever, titles and thumbnails, whatever can't really control that. All in all, it took me about two hours to do all of that. 
Had I not done daily uploads, that video probably would have taken me five to six hours. So we're talking about a full eight hour workday would have consumed. Doing something every day will force you to get good at it. And you'll just find ways to just get it done no matter what. Now these two points alone made it worth doing and these were a big factor of why I decided to do it this year since you can only get better if you do something every single day. All right, so what is the plan here and what can we expect on this channel during this season of Vlogmas? Well, number one, we'll be sticking mostly to the same topics, mainly men's fashion and some cycling stuff as well. If I do have a bit more bandwidth left over, I hate using that word. If I do have more time and we're on a roll, I might start experimenting more with some camera reviews since I do have some pretty serious cameras and maybe some other video ideas that may help you guys. However, the plan is for 80% of the content being posted on this channel is going to be around men's fashion and cycling since that is what you guys seem to enjoy the most. Since it is not about me, it is about you, the audience, and I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. So once again, thank you for being here. Second thing, every single video posted needs to have a purpose. No more random coffee vlogs that I used to make just taking the subway into the Bryant Park area of New York City, getting coffee, talking about a bunch of random shit in my head and then coming back and editing it and saying, you know, the video just kind of someone, some random guy, nobody walking around just doing doing nothing, doing jack in the city. No videos like that. Every single video either has to inform you of something or entertain you in some form of way. Doesn't have to be crazy. Doesn't have to be ground breaking, earth shattering, anything like that. Could just be as simple as I'm walking around testing out these boots, testing out this jacket. I wanted to talk about my coffee consumption, want it to clear my head. It has to have a topic, it has to have a purpose, it has to have a story, no random videos. Speaking of that, not every video needs to be a vlog. A vlog for me is not this. This is an indoor talking head video. For me, a vlog is when you're holding your camera, walking around outside. So that Brooklyn Bridge video I did, the sunrise that I did a little while ago, a week or so ago, that was a vlog since I was out there, mostly handheld. I'm out filming myself in public. Now, one thing that they said over on the Think Media channel a while ago was, vlogs are not just an excuse to make a random video, they are just a different format. So think about it, every single video has to have an intro, a couple of bullet points, you have to have a story, same thing. Whether you're sitting here moving the camera around your house or apartment on a tripod, or you're walking to get coffee, you still wanna have that purpose. An outdoor vlog is not an excuse to just be totally random. Number four, the edits are gonna be kept a lot simpler, not a whole bunch of extra B-roll, whole bunch of extra effects. I don't really use too many effects. I keep it pretty simple, pretty normal here. But one thing I've noticed that I enjoy and you tend to enjoy as the audience is the simple, easier videos. Like this video, for example, maybe I throw up a bunch of pictures just to show certain things, one or two. Maybe I cut out a couple of filler words here, a couple of long pauses, stuff like that but nothing too crazy. I really wanted to get it to the point where they were just one take, but that's very hard to do. So now I just clip them up here and there, but the edits kept simple. Those are the videos that I like doing. Spending three, four, five days on a big video can sometimes just feel like procrastination and like I'm just chasing perfection, whereas it's almost like get on with it. What are you gonna do if the video doesn't perform well? And there's this, this whole big expectation of the video has to perform because you spent three, four days on it. It, it just, not what I signed up for. Some of my best performing videos here, which are also the videos that you have enjoyed the most because that's performance anyway, are the simple videos where the story is impelling or it's very informative. And in the grand scheme of things, the fancy edits, the fancy B-roll, the fancy songs, don't really matter that much. And the next point, pretty sure is number five, I'm gonna be using all of the gear that I currently have, be giving it a run for its money. I mentioned I have some pretty serious gear, A7S III with a 20 millimeter F1.8 lens. The Sony ZV-E1 is right here with the 16 to 35 millimeter. It's only an F4, but it's what I got. I've used this a whole bunch of times. I've also got the DJI Pocket 3, bit of an overhyped camera, but really good. And then also have my iPhone 15 Pro, as well as, I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. Where do I have it? Where do I have, do I have, yeah, here it is. Got a whole bunch of, bunch of stuff everywhere, as well as the DJI Action 4. So I've got a whole bunch of awesome cameras. I can really give them a run for their money, put them through their paces. That way I can decide what I actually want. If I ever want to get rid of something, I can, I know what to sell, I know what I can actually 
I know what I can actually survive without. And that's just something that inspires me to make more content. And finally, number six, my target or my goal is not going to be to post a video every single day in December. I'm going to try to post five videos a week. That means Monday through Friday, I post one long form, Saturday, Sunday, take a bit of a break. Sometimes I do end up doing some video work on the weekend just so that I can get a head start when Monday comes around, but that's the target. Now I may actually post on Saturdays and Sundays if I have a backlog of videos. However, the target is still going to be five days a week. And I should mention if I miss a day or two here or there, I won't let it stop me this time. And I wanna talk about YouTube shorts because they're not really my thing. However, I used to post a lot of shorts. I like making long form content, but I actually like to use Opus Clip or Opus Pro, whatever they're calling them. 15, $20 a month, I don't remember, obviously. I'm this video is not sponsored by anybody, by the way, but it's really cool how you can just take a long form video like this and it'll give you 20 shorts. I used to post like 100 or 200 shorts a week, which was a little bit too much, I think, for you guys and or for me too. But I'm going to restrict it to just three shorts per day. I may post Saturday, Sunday, and I'll see how that does. I'll see how you guys end up liking it. I have to get it out of my head that more is not always better. Sometimes less is more. Got to give the algorithm a chance to circulate the videos around and let people actually see them before I just keep feeding it, overfeeding it 10, 15 videos a day. So that's about it for this one. I don't really do outros too much anymore. I find that it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're interested in being along for this journey, make sure you're subscribed and click that bell in the icon. That way you get notified when something gets posted on here. However, the plan is I'm going to be, like I said, posting a lot. So if you don't want to get dinged every time or pinged or spammed maybe. If you don't want to get notified constantly by this channel, maybe don't click that notification bell if you don't want to. Obviously, it helps me if you do. I'm just trying to set the expectations here. So I'd say go ahead and click that bell notification. And if it ends up being too much for you, you could always unclick it in the future. Okay, now it's time to edit this video. I will hopefully see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.